Test, test. Having gotten comfortable with nutrition from studying it for some time, I forget how confusing and complicated it can be. Saturated fat, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, what about animal fats, butter, the seed oils, vegetable oils, there's, there's convolution and there's conflicting information. If you've ever just felt totally lost by it all, this video is for you. Welcome to No Lab Code Required. My name is Johnny Cole Dixon, and I've realized that a lot of us don't have the basics covered. So what we're gonna cover in this video is going to be so that we can gain competency, which will translate right into confidence in our kitchens, in our grocery stores, and when we dine out. There are two concepts this video will cover. They are absolutely foundational, and we have to establish them before we can advance. When we do advance, it'll be in a separate video. There will be a part two. Concept number one, saturation. When I say fats and oils, this is what I'm talking about. This list is not exhaustive. There are always a few more out there than we realize. Animal fats are fairly straightforward, but plant source fats have a much broader umbrella because us humans will squeeze just about anything until it starts to bleed oil. Now, the only thing these plant sourced fats have in common is just that. They came from either a fruit or a vegetable, but that's when the similarities end because some of these are totally different than the next and have nothing in common with some of the others on this list. We are so certainly going to break down these differences, but we have to save it for part two because it can be confusing if we don't have what we're about to go over in this video. You see, most of us find fat so confusing because we're missing the very foundation of what it actually is. So when we start throwing terms around like saturated and unsaturated fats, it's like we've never built the foundation. It's like trying to build a skyscraper without first building the first floor. So question, what comes to mind when you think of fat? Well, it's hard to define fat without using the words in the definition. It's fatty, it's oily, it's buttery. I'd love for the top comment of this video to be somebody describing fat with more unique words, but it really is one of a kind. We got butter and we have olive oil, two totally different things, yet we recognize them both as fat. So what is going on here? How are these fats the same but different? And what makes them unique? And what makes them healthy or unhealthy? This, what you're looking at here, this is the foundation. This is the first floor. Understanding what you're looking at here is going to unlock the confidence behind what you use in your kitchen. This is called a triglyceride. This little thing is what fat is composed of. This is what chicken fat is made of. This is what olive oil is made of. This is what the fat on our body is made of. When we talk about fat universally, far and wide, I want you to think about triglycerides. Let's get familiar with this little sucker. So this is a basic structural unit of fat. The reason it's so important is because by looking at this, we can understand saturation, which is where most of us get caught up. It's saturated fat bad is unsaturated fat bad. Nutritionally speaking, all we care about here are these tails that extend out from this backbone. These are called fatty acids. We may have thought fat was round and globular looking, but the way we denote triglycerides, we're really looking at a bunch of squiggly twig looking lines. You see, triglycerides are just like the good old trench coat gag, a bunch of kids stacked up on each other's shoulders to make one adult, a bunch of individuals united to make one unit. Well, triglycerides have the same thing going on. Individuals united to make one unit. The individualism is really the emphasis because each fatty acid can be different. Each single fatty acid within itself can either be saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated. And this is where we get the terminology from. We know this top fatty acid as a saturated fat because it doesn't have these lines here. These are called double bonds. And when a fatty acid has one, it's no longer saturated. So we're going to call it mono. Mono meaning one, mono unsaturated. If there are two or more double bonds, we're gonna call it poly. Poly meaning multiple, poly unsaturated. Now, are we gonna be examining triglycerides in the marketplace? No, but this is going on in our body with our food and I believe understanding fat at this level is going to translate to great confidence with fat. Now, if we really want to understand fat, we do have to understand three things about triglycerides. Number one, they can come in any combination of saturation. We can have all saturated, they can be all polyunsaturated, we can have two monounsaturated and one polyunsaturated, right? Just like a Rubik's cube, there's numerous combinations. Number two, fat is made up of a lot of triglycerides. I tried to keep it a secret from you, but for the last couple minutes, you've been a board certified chemist because 
we are extremely micro, extremely zoomed in when we're looking at one single triglyceride. That's like looking at one single pixel on a TV screen. We can't necessarily see pixels, but we know whatever we're watching is made up of them. Number three, the saturation of the triglycerides tell us most of what we need to know. The reason we call butter a saturated fat is because if we take a good look into the triglycerides that make up butter, we'd see that majority of the individual fatty acids are saturated. This is actually the case for a lot of fats that are solid at room temperature. They have a ton of these saturated triglycerides, or we can say saturated fats. And if we're looking at this chart here, this tends to be animal sourced fats. We can see coconut oil on here too. They're packed with saturated fats. My neighborhood where I came up, it was mostly black people. So I can call it a black neighborhood, but that does not mean that there weren't other races present. In the same sense, when we're looking at this chart, we can actually see that all three types of fatty acids are present in each fat, just in different amounts. All right, this leads us right into concept number two. All fats have a common enemy and that enemy is oxidation. Last time, last time, last time I checked the inventory of the shop, these were highlighted in red and I was like, oh, we don't have many of these left, do we? You can be one of the special people to own the original, legendary, iconic Do More Listening purple label hat. Check description below and get the Do More Listening hat. If you miss out on the hat, grab yourself a hoodie. We don't skip on quality. Everyone is telling me they love this thing. It's soft, it's snug, it's stylish, and it should be shipping straight to your step. It will become your favorite hoodie, watch. And if it doesn't, I will personally come to your home and tailor it until it is your favorite hoodie. Jump into the shop link below. There are other items as well. Get yourself or whoever you think of first, something. Join the club. Oxidation. Some of us may have heard this word before, and even if we can't spell out the exact definition precisely, we kind of know what it is intuitively if we've ever seen an apple undergo browning. You're watching oxidation in real time. It's like this degrading effect. Oxidation is done by oxygen. Now, not exclusively when you start to get really technical with stuff, but when we're talking about fats in this conversation, the primary focus, the main driver we're looking at here is oxygen. The same thing that takes place on that apple is the same thing that can take place in our fats and our oils. Here's oxygen. Here is a fatty acid. When they interact, this fatty acid actually transforms and becomes something we don't want. This directly contributes to the rancidity of the oil. The more rancid an oil becomes, the more we can sense it through our taste and our smell. And as nature has taught us, if it don't smell right, it probably ain't right. This is why understanding saturation is such a big deal because each type of fatty acid is not as equally uh, susceptible to this nasty oxidation. In fact, this review lays it out perfectly. Double bonds increase the susceptibility of fatty acids to oxidation, with an increasing number of double bonds increasing oxidative susceptibility. So what are we saying here? We're saying there's levels to this. The more double bonds, a fatty acid has, the higher the chances of it becoming oxidized. And we know a thing or two about double bonds now. We know saturated fatty acids do not have any of them. Monounsaturated have one and polyunsaturated come with two or more. So this means polyunsaturated fatty acids are objectively the most susceptible to oxidation. Look at it this way. If you took the knight of saturated fat, he is well equipped to defend himself against oxidation. He has a shield, he has a sword, it's going to take quite a lot to damage him. The knight of monounsaturated fat is at least able to defend himself a little bit with his sword, but he's not as impervious as saturated fat. Now what about polyunsaturated fat? Get a load of this guy. This man showed up to a medieval fight without a medieval chance. No shield, no sword. He is by far the most vulnerable to damage. Now, saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, are any of these fats inherently bad for us? No, now, and I know this video has your wheels turning. We're gonna get there, I promise. In part two, we're gonna get more granular. We're gonna answer all the questions. We're gonna absolutely maximize clarity so that you will know full stop what you're dealing with in the marketplace. But this video served to be a strong foundation so we could get to that point. We're gonna talk what's good, we're gonna talk what's bad, what we recommend, uh, what to be cautious of. If that video is already made, I'm gonna tag it at the end of this one. All you have to do is click on it. Now, go down below and check out the shop if you have not already. I spent a lot of time on the merch pieces, making sure that they were high quality. The design was nice, all this good stuff. They send me a sample. I send it back doing the whole little merch thing, right? And there's going to be more stuff to come in the future as well. Appreciate you checking this one out. Part two will be on the way. I'm going to get a pacha away. Yeah.